Hi, this is Custom Works. I'm Clint Allen. Thanks for stopping in today. We're going to be covering 7.3 power stroke alternator issues and what batteries you should be using. Yes, there are batteries you should be using. Stick around. Well, hey, thanks for sticking around through that. Today we're going to be talking about alternators and which type of batteries that you should be using in your 7.3 power stroke. And yes, there is a specific battery that you should be using, and I'm going to show you it, and I'm going to show you why. But we're going to start out with the alternator first. A lot of people have problems with the 7.3 and the 6.0 with alternator burnout happens in a year or two years of usage. Now it happens more on the 6.0 but that was because of a change from Ford in the type of alternator that they were using. But we're going to focus today specifically and only on the 7.3. The alternator issues first starts out by some upgrades that you need to be doing on your truck. And the upgrades that you should be doing and I've learned this the hard way through experience, is that the connector that Ford puts on, on the back of their alternator leading to the wire, gets burnt out over time. And that is putting out a lot of voltage that goes to the batteries, is part of the computer system. And when the proper voltage is not being placed in the system on a 7.3, your injector module will not run correctly, causing misfires and misrunnings. And one of the things that you will need to start to replace is these little connectors that Ford puts on is just way too small and way too chintzy. What you need to upgrade first off is putting on a very large lug and these can be gotten at your local automotive store in the battery section or these right here which I get for car audio installation and these are much thicker and down below in the description I will have uh, information on where you can get these lugs as a complete lug set or singles and they come in multiple sizes but we have an upgrade also in wiring and this right here upgrades from the factory wiring and jumps all the way up to four gauge and this helps flow power to the system much more effectively without any voltage drops or resistance. When you start building up resistance you will start causing runnability problems that along with the connector here being a low grade connector and it's starting to break off over time from the vibration of the motor you'll start running into runnability issues and you'll be searching the motor you'll be hitting YouTube trying to figure out what's going on when actually all it is is a bad connection. Now most alternators are going to have a lifetime span and that lifetime span obviously depends on how long you run the vehicle, how many miles are on it, but sooner or later you are going to wear this alternator out. But it is very, very rare to be burning them out every one to two years. So let's talk about connections at the battery. Now most people what they're going to do is when they have a amplifier or other accessories that they run in the vehicle, they're going to go patch into the fuse box. They're going to go and hack into a connector that is on the battery and kind of like bolt it off of the side of the battery connector. And this is a bad idea on your 7.3. What you want to do is get yourself a proper connector for the battery. And this is a car audio connector. This right here 
and you want to get the ones that have the bolts in them, these right here will offer you all kinds of connections to keep everything isolated from the motor and the runnability and from the computer and the injection control module. What you don't want to have happening is your accessories pulling voltage from the computer, from the computer control unit, from the injector control unit, causing voltage and ohm drops, causing runnability problems. So what we want to hit down on is the connectors that go right here. These are for the alternator and for the extra battery and for the starter. Notice how it's nice, neat, clean, all nicely lugged, heavy duty lugs. We have heavy duty wiring. We've pulled out the factory wiring and we've put in from the battery to the battery here, which is a two gauge. We have a one ot for the starter and that right there is a actual welding wire. The welding wire has more strands in it, allows more voltage to pass with the least amount of resistance. At the starter itself, you're going to want to make a new connection also with the heavy duty lugs. Over time, from the heat of the battery starting the starter, all that voltage running through there causes the ends to slowly fray, slowly heat up, and completely charcoal the ends. This right here eliminates that problem and you're running wires that have zero resistance when it comes to feeding back to your injector control and your computer control module. By keeping all your accessories separate once again you will have no runnability problems that can't be figured out because everything's separate. Nothing, nothing is overlapping each other. Now what you need to do is go through your whole engine bay and check all your connections, check that you don't have wires that are dragging or vibrating or causing holes within the wires and isolate them by either using rubber hoses and then using zip ties or electrical tape or duct tape, whatever your favorite is but you can see right here that we have wires that are rubbing and that happens all through the top of this motor from time, from the vibration and you'll be chasing down runnability problems if you do not go through and make sure that those wires are not rubbed through or cracked and isolate and cover them up in areas where they're going to be touching something. Well, let's talk 7.3 and mismatch batteries, which is a bad, bad, bad idea. How bad is it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the average guy trying to save a few bucks is going to have a issue with batteries burning out on the passenger side because this is where the most amount of voltage is drawn from the starter. Uh, especially with folks who believe that they shouldn't be plugging in their trucks during the winter time and really drawing excessive power from the first battery on your passenger side. 
a guy will go through, he'll run down to wherever he thinks his favorite battery store is, pick up a battery, throw her in, everything seems fine. While getting runnability problems, and the issue comes into play where if you have a battery on your driver's side that is three, four, five years old, that amperage, that voltage, that cold cranking amp has faded over the years. And you're going to put a brand new battery in on this side, whether it's the same company or a different company, you're going to have runnability problems and you're going to have a situation where this battery here, let's say if it was 650 cold cranking amps, is going to gauge at that amperage for cold cranking amps, but your driver's side might only be three or 400 cold cranking amps because it's been in here for several years. Now what happens is, is that the alternator is feeding one battery to charge it and it's got to come down over to the driver's side and it's got to charge that battery up also. That battery always on the driver's side is taking less of a charge over time. And when that happens, you run into a situation where the cold cranking amps drop off faster, you have less voltage over there, and the new battery is going to be constantly drawing. It's going to be constantly equalizing. And when you have a situation where you have power that is trying to equalize, it will affect the runnability of the computer and your injector control module and cause injectors not to fire correctly because it's getting the wrong amount of voltage or it's getting a draw of amperage or ohms that is mis telling the computer what it should be doing. Now, we're not going to do a cold cranking amp test, but I'm going to show you simply a situation using a regular 12 volt voltage gauge of what can happen over the years of your battery. So if you want to get real technical and you're still having a hard time biting on this that you shouldn't be running mismatched batteries by all means run down to your local automotive store disconnect if you're running mismatched batteries disconnect one side completely so you're not sharing voltage and have them do a cold cranking amp test on each battery and you will find that there is noticeable differences in the cold cranking amp and in the voltage. You're always going to have a situation where one battery is going to be fighting the other battery and what's going to happen is as quickly the other battery is going to go out on you. 
Now, what battery should you be using? Keep in mind that this channel does not take paid promotions. The battery that you should be running in your 7.3 is an Odyssey battery. Odyssey batteries are a brand new battery and you're like, oh, well, geez, you know, I go down to any automotive store and get an Interstate or I can get a Walmart battery and they're brand new. No, they're not. What you are buying is a remanufactured battery. And let me clarify that. All the lead that is in those batteries are recycled lead. Recycled everything. The only thing new is the acid that they put in it and the housing. When you buy an Odyssey battery you are getting virgin lead. Virgin everything on the inside of the battery. This is why these batteries that I have bought and have lasted over 11 years will save you a ton of money and they still have the same cold cranking amp capability today as they did 11 years ago. Two batteries, one purchase, one time. How many times have you changed out your batteries in your truck? Because you're going to go and look up Odyssey batteries and you go, oh boy, this guy's nuts. They're expensive. Well, really, are they? You buy a regular battery, you're looking at $150 to $200. You change that battery out three to five years. You buy an Odyssey battery, you've bought in a battery that is fresh lead, has high vibration anti-vibration capabilities, has far better plating, has better plating in between for when you jump from your positive plate to your negative plate. They have specific intersect of paper diaphragms that do not jiggle over time and cause jumping from one side of the plate to the other side of the plate. These batteries are expensive. They're usually around that $300 to $330 depending on where you buy them. But you buy them once and they will last well over 11 years. I've been running them in all types of situations, running them hard with hydraulic motors that are sitting on the back of this truck they have lasted the time and I only had to make the purchase one time over all these years and they're still being used as of today. So I hope you've learned something today and you take it easy and you have a good day. You're still here yet? It's over. Oh, I know. Go ahead, hit the subscribe button, the little bell, you know, the little bell, and that'll tell you every time I post a new video. Also go root around in my previous videos and you'll find a lot of interesting content. Until then, go home. Oh yeah, the garbage can's over there. You know, don't be making a mess. You know, clean up after yourself.
Go, go.